Welcome back to another week of LCC Kids TV with your host here, me, the Sunshine, ready to help you better understand what Jesus wants to tell you in his word. Before we start, let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for today. I thank you for my family and everything that you have blessed me with. I pray that you would speak to me today, open my heart so that I might learn and find what you have to tell me. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know about you, but after I pray, I am super excited to worship. Yay! Let's move on to the next part of our video for worship. Now it's time to learn our memory verse. 
Hi kids! Our memory verse for this week is Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Romans 15, 13. Hi kids! It's me, Miss Sunshine, ready for another Word of the Week. Are you ready? Let's sing. Word of the Week. Word of the week, word of the week. Let's learn a new word. Yay! This week's word is full. Yeah, full. Now, you heard in our memory verse that Jesus said he will fill you with hope and joy full, completely. Now, I'm sure that you already know what the word full means. It's the opposite of empty. However, when God uses the word full, he doesn't use it the same way that we use it in the world. He means it in a bit different and a bit bigger and deeper way. So let me help you better understand what full means to God. Yeah? Let's go. I have a glass that is empty. Yeah? except for a little bit of green food coloring to help you better understand and see what I'm going to put inside. Yeah? So, now I'm going to fill this glass. Now, this glass could be half empty or half full, but depending on where you are or what you're doing, this glass could be considered full already. If you go to the grocery store and you buy a bag of chips, for example, you might find out that the bag is only filled to this point and they consider it a full bag of chips. And then you get home and you're like, that's not a full bag of chips, but it is because that's what the world considers full. However, let's go deeper. This is not full, and most of you probably wouldn't consider this full either. So, God full looks like this. Ah! God full looks like this. <laughs> it's all the way up to the top. Contents wise, you might use the word plethora, which is the English word translated from the original Greek language that was used in Romans. So this is completely full to the top. Yeah, there's a plethora of water in here. It is full, it is filled to its capacity. You can't put any more water in here. And when you're that full, you're bursting at the seams like this cup that's already leaking green water onto the floor of my apartment. <laughs> See, it's why joy is a fruit of the spirit, because it's something you produce because you can't contain the amount of joy, just like this cup can't contain the amount of water I've tried to put it in. You can't contain the joy that God has put inside of you. Like if I poured any more water into this cup, it would overflow. Imagine if our bags of cookies and chips and candy were filled to the same extent that God considers the word full. Wouldn't that be amazing? Now, what does this and the concept of full have to do with our lesson? Let's find out. My soul, my soul, magnifies the Lord my soul. Did you hear that? I think that's our mail. We've got a mail. We have a mail. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. It's from who? It's from Jesus. A letter from Jesus again. Let's open this one and then let's read it all together. My dearest child. I want you to know we can laugh together. Love, Jesus, we can laugh together? Really? Well, 
Let's watch this video so that we understand more about his message. Our story for today is about Abraham and Sarah. Once there was a man named Abraham and his wife named Sarah. God promised Abraham and his wife that one day they would be parents even though they were old and had no children. One day, three visitors came to Abraham's house. He hurried to meet them. He offered to join him to get inside the tent and to eat something. The visitors agreed. The three visitors asked Abraham, where is Sarah? Abraham replied, she's in the other room. Then one of the men spoke and said, Next year, I will come back to see you and Sarah will have a son. Now, Sarah was listening behind the living room door. She started to laugh. Ha 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 ha! How can I have a child? I'm almost 100 years old. Later, when the visitors had left, Abraham and Sarah realized that the man who had told them this was indeed God. Then one year later, she and Abraham had a son named Isaac, which means love. <laughs> they were very excited and remembered to thank God. Memory verse, Romans chapter 15 verse 13. I pray that the God who gives hope will fill you with much joy and peace while you trust in Him. Then your hope will overflow by the power of the Holy Spirit. Again, our memory verse, Romans chapter 15 verse 13. Hi kids, it's me, Miss Sunshine, ready to wrap up our video for today. Ready? Let's go. In the story just a little bit ago, you learned about two people named Abraham and Sarah. And they had some special visitors who came and told them, Hey, Sarah's going to have a baby in less than a year. And Sarah's listening and she says, <laughs> That's so funny because Sarah is almost 100 years old. Yes, 100 years old. And by the world standards, having a baby at 100 years old is insane and crazy and not possible at all. But Abraham comes in and says, hey, Sarah, one of those visitors was God. And sure enough, less than a year later, they had a baby and they named him Isaac. Yeah, which means laughter. Makes sense. So. What does this story and the concept of being full and the note that we received from Jesus today saying, I want to laugh with you. What does that all mean together? Well, it means three things. One, as people, we don't be serious or focused all the time. I don't know about you, but I'm not focused or serious all the time. I enjoy laughing. I enjoy having fun. In school, when you're learning, it is important to be serious because you need to focus on your work and learning, and that's important. The same goes true when you or your parents are in church worshiping. Your parents traditionally are not laughing when they're standing there worshiping God. Normally, on most places, or on most Sundays, or Fridays, or whenever you attend church, you can often see people crying, depending on where you go. Now, why is this important? Because it's important to have balance in your life. It's important that you don't just have focusedness and seriousness. Joy and laughter and dancing and singing and happiness are also important. In fact, God tells us in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 4, there's a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. 
So, further, point number two. Jesus wasn't serious all the time, too. It even says so in the, in, in the New Testament. Jesus often was serious, but he had the full range of emotions. In fact, he felt sadness and anger and frustration and all the range of emotions, but he also felt happiness and joy. Jesus was a fun guy to be around. And it shows because the people that were surrounding him, they didn't follow Jesus because he was serious all the time. Otherwise, they probably would have left halfway through. Jesus was a fun guy to hang out with too. Yeah, in fact, it shows when Jesus talks about the little children. You wouldn't be following Jesus if he was serious all the time, would you? No. Jesus was fun and he laughed and he sang and danced and he was silly. And it's probably why children in our very first note from Jesus, Jesus said, let the children come to me. Don't stop them because Jesus wanted to hang out with the kids. He wanted to be funny and goofy with the kids and silly the same way that you want to be silly with him. Yeah? Jesus wants to be fun with you. In fact, in the lesson for today, in the note, it says, Jesus wants you to know that around him, there is light and laughter and, and joy. And not just joy, but fullness of joy. Yeah? Because Jesus, when he gives you joy, he doesn't just give you a little bit of joy. <laughs> Jesus gives you the fullness of joy because he wants you to love your life. Jesus wants you to love him even more because he fills you with joy. So he says, there's the joy of being forgiven, the joy of feeling understood, the joy of fresh hope. In his kingdom, joy is an everyday event, sort of like the weather. It's okay if you and Jesus aren't always frowning together in, con in, in concentration. He says, let's laugh instead. Be thankful. Let's dance and sing. When something wacky happens to you, he wants to hear about it. Tell him about what surprises you, what delights you, what tickles your funny bone. He says, let's laugh together. I don't know about you, but that makes me super happy because it comforts me knowing that Jesus wants me not just when I'm feeling serious. He doesn't just want to talk to me when I'm feeling like I can focus. Jesus wants to show me things that are super funny. And I don't know about you, but I've experienced laughter with Jesus. I have legitimately looked at my Bible and started reading and I said, <laughs> Jesus, that's so funny. And he's there and he participates and Jesus is laughing too because he wants you at your whole. He doesn't just want this part of you. He wants all of you. And point number three, kids, we have reasons to be joyful. Whether you're feeling joy, sad, anger, disgust, or scared. And yes, I just listed all of the characters of the movie Inside Out. They're all temporary, but the joy that Jesus brings you is eternal because he is eternal. And he, and his joy that he gives you is based on his promises. And it's based on him keeping his promises and the fact that he's faithful and always with you and always loves you. And eventually, you're headed to a much better place than Earth. Yeah? True joy and fullness of joy is a choice that you trust God. And you can be filled with overflowing joy, just like the water in the cup that I showed you before. Jesus wants to give that to you. For this week's Sunshine and Salt Challenge, what I want you to do is make a picture and post it on the Sunshine LCC Facebook page. Draw your picture of you showing me what you feel joy about. Why can you have joy? 
I have on my poster, I can have joy because heaven is my real home. I can have joy because I have an amazing family here in Kuwait. I can have joy because he is always with me, always. And he loves me, like a lot. And nothing can separate me from his love. Nothing can separate you from his love too. Jesus' love is big enough, way big. And the joy that he gives you is perfect fullness of joy. Before I wrap up this part of the video, I want to introduce a special new part of the video. It's called a sunshine shout out. Yeah? A couple weeks ago, I asked you to tell me where in the world were you listening to this video from? And we got our first response a while ago. I want to say a special shout out to some special visitors who are listening from Michigan which is in the state right next door to where Miss Sunshine is from. Yeah? So, I'm going to put our first piece of tape on the map behind me. And I hope that more of you will send me a message. Where are you watching this video from? I wanna give a special shout out to Bella and Nate and Zane and Dare and Martise and Avante and Jacoby and Kyrie and Genesis and Matthias and Faith and Joshua who are all listening from Michigan. Hi! Welcome to you watching LCC Kids TV. Yeah? God loves you and he has fullness of joy to give to you guys and all of you kids living around the world. There are so many songs that speak to the joy that we can have, but you've been getting joy specifically from Psalms 91. Let's see who's been practicing Psalm 91 this week. Hi, my name is Veronica from LCC for Onea. Today I will say Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Thank you. Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2 Whoever dwells in, in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my Savior, my God in whom I trust. Amen. Whoa! Keep up the good work, kids! That's amazing! Until next week, this is Miss Sunshine reminding you to let your light shine.